Have you ever asked yourself the question, why am I alive? What will remain after I'm gone? What can I do for the world? I admit, I hadn't always thought about it. But the more that I look at this world, the more I learn about it, and the more often these questions come to my mind. My name is Alexandra, I am from Russia, and I came to China four years ago. I am an ordinary person. I study during the week. After school I return home, cook lunch and go about my business. On weekends I rest. Once a week I buy groceries in a big supermarket. Fresh vegetables, fruits and milk I buy at a smaller store near my home. It would seem that I live in the same way as other ordinary people. But while living in China, something bothered me. I didn't immediately understand what it was. And only a couple of years after living in China, I realized that, which was staring me right in the face. The absolutely irrational use of disposable plastic bags, food containers and individually packaged candy and cookies you buy in the store. In Russia, where I come from, nothing we do there reaches such an extreme. There are free bags in stores and many fruits that already have natural packaging are still wrapped in plastic film. But for some reason it was here, in China, that the thought struck me and I wanted to do something about it. After all, this is a real problem which has long passed on a global scale and has been covered in the media and eco-organizations in the past few years. This is a plastic pollution problem. So, how much plastic do we consume? How many single-use plastic bags end up being brought home from the store in a single week? Used only for carrying groceries home and then simply being discarded, thus ending their utility. This led me to tally my family use of this kind of plastic bag for one week to see for myself how many plastic bags I am responsible for. So, I conducted an experiment where we would go shopping at our local supermarket buy our usual groceries and pack them as the average person would. For example, we would separate our fruits and vegetables, each variety in its own separate bag. We collected each and every plastic bag in a sealed box, so that we wouldn't be able to see how many bags we were using. At the end of the week, we took out the contents of the box and we were shocked. We just couldn't believe what an amount of plastic waste was being produced by only two people, and that was just plastic bags. There are other plastic waste products that we use and dispose of unthinkingly every day besides plastic bags, plastic wrap, plastic bottles, straws, food containers, and many, many more. So, what happens to the plastic that we use? Where do all the plastic bags, cups, takeaway containers and straws end up? Some of it will end up in a landfill, some of it will be recycled, and some of it will be dumped into water. Plastic dumped into water source end up being carried down rivers and will eventually end up in the ocean. Plastic waste often ends up far from where it was discarded. Pollution carried by wind and ocean currents form what are called gyres, sometimes known as a plastic islands, garbage patches or plastic soup. There are currently five garbage gyres, the biggest of which is Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Statistically speaking, 15 tons of plastic waste is dumped into the world oceans every minute. Let's do the math using that one piece of information. So, multiply 15 tons of plastic waste by 60 minutes, that leaves us with 900 tons per hour. 
Now multiply that by 24, that's 21,600 tons of plastic waste per day. And finally, multiply that by 365 days and you've got approximately 8 million tons of plastic waste that is dumped into the world's oceans every year. 8 million tons of plastic bottles, bags, toys and other plastic products that ends up in the world's oceans each year. For you to understand the better scale of the problem, we need some object to compare. For example, this is Shanghai Oriental Tower, which weighs 120,000 tons. So, each year we dump into the ocean equivalent of 66 Shanghai Oriental Towers. So, what's the issue, right? Why is plastic such a threat to our existence? Well. Plastic doesn't biodegrade like organic waste does. Plastics are photodegradable, which means that when they are exposed to UV rays from the sun, it starts to break down the molecular structure of the plastics. Salt water and waves break down the plastics even further into smaller and smaller pieces over the years, but it never fully degrades to the point of leaving zero impact. Meanwhile, Whales and other large marine animals interpret plastic as a food source because up until we put plastic into the water, everything in the ocean was edible. This fills up their entire stomach cavity with indigestible waste and as a result, these animals die from poisoning and starvation. Approximately 100,000 marine animals and approximately 1 million seabirds die every year from pollution-related causes. Many sea animals get caught up and entangled in plastic bags. So what happens to the smaller pieces of plastic? Well, since plastic doesn't biodegrade, it simply breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces. It breaks down into what is called microplastic, that's plastic pieces smaller than 5 mm in diameter. Microplastic pollution has been found inside mackerel in Thailand and other fishes used for human consumption. 9% of their stomach contents contain plastic debris. Microplastics have also been found in other sea life, such as clams and oysters. The problem goes even deeper. Nanoplastics, unlike microplastics, are tiny. Microplastic particles that are invisible to the naked eye. That is one centimeter long baby fish. That's 10 millimeters. To see how this pollution might be affecting young fish, researchers raised European perch in water filled with polystyrene plastic particles. Only 81% of the perch in plastic filled water hatched compared with 96 in clean water. Even the ones that managed to hatch grew more slowly and had bellies full of the plastic particles after two weeks. These tiny spheres along the underside of the fish and those exposed to the highest amount of plastic completely ignored the smell of injured perch added to their tanks, a scent that usually makes them freeze to avoid being seen. When put in tank with pike predators, these polystyrene munching perch were killed off three times more quickly than those raised in plastic free water. If we use this experiment as an example of what might happen in the oceans as a result of plastic pollution, it sheds light on the significant effect that plastic pollution could have on the life cycle of fish worldwide. To harden and soften plastics, chemicals are used to create the desired effect. Chemicals such as bisphenol A or BPA, which I'm sure you must have heard about before. These and other chemicals affect humans, specifically babies in utero and children. BPA and phthalates are linked to numerous health problems like cancer, diabetes, autism, attention deficit disorder, obesity, infertility and recurrent miscarriage. Fish consume plastics both intentionally and unintentionally. And these plastics, depending on how long they've been floating in the water, may have a variety of chemicals attached to them such as heavy metals, PCB and other pollutants. Once fish absorb these chemicals from ingested plastic, the chemicals are then free to enter the bodies of anything higher up on the food chain, including humans. 
By including fish in your diet, you may be exposing your body to a variety of chemicals you'd never willingly ingest. This brings me to my final point. What can we do today to minimize plastic waste? Grocery stores are a huge source of household waste, mainly because most of their products are prepackaged. Therefore, you can choose to shop for fresh ingredients without any packaging and choose to skip the plastic bags. Firstly, they don't do anything to protect your fruits and vegetables from getting bruised or damaged. And secondly, if you are concerned about contamination, the plastic bags might keep your fruits and vegetables separated from each other until you get home, but once you do get home, you can wash them, all thereby easily shedding a few more single-use plastic bags from your personal plastic pollution contribution. Nowadays, some countries are banning single-use plastic products, but why wait for the government to implement laws? You can start making your future better and cleaner now. Habits are slow to change. But if you start today and keep in mind the bigger picture, you can adjust your lifestyle little by little. Your kitchen is full of plastic items and just by opening your fridge or the kitchen cabinet, you will see your food wrapped in all sorts of plastics. Many of these can easily be replaced. Instead of buying or using free shopping bags from the supermarket, you can take your own reusable bag with you to carry all your items. It takes each one of us to make small contributions to make a huge impact. Our fruits and vegetables don't need to be wrapped in plastic. Instead, use reusable cotton produce sacks and try to buy plastic-free loose fruits and veggies wherever possible. By using reusable plastic food containers, you can drastically reduce your contribution. But if you really want to reduce your plastic footprint, go for glass and metal container options instead. Plastic clean films are largely single-use plastic. So what are the alternatives? Beeswax wraps, which work equally well, are 100% recyclable, reusable and come in pretty designs. More than half a million plastic straws are used every day around the world. When you order your drink, ask for it without a straw or a plastic stirrer. You can take your metal, bamboo or glass straw with you. To-go cups are convenient, making our lives much easier and faster, but usually they are made of plastic. Even paper cups are lined with a plastic coating in the inside, making them non-recyclable. Having a reusable cup with you at all times is a great way to reduce your plastic consumption. It's still not too late to make lasting changes.